All right, welcome everyone to the next episode on how to kiss for entrepreneurs. And before you think too much of the word kiss, we meant to use the word kiss here as a short for keep it super simple. I'm Primi Jails from Start Results, and let me introduce you a little bit, just a little bit of a reminder of who Start Results is. We are an entrepreneurship uh, education provider, and we believe that entrepreneurship is the key to solving world problems. We were founded in 2014 by Aaron Mashano, and we are part of the Leaders of Tomorrow group, along with several other companies that you can see there, the names. And our clients are entrepreneurs or people who want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't have previous experiences at all or serial entrepreneurs who are starting a new business with a new idea. So our programs, uh, there are two programs that we um, provided, but one uh, is the, mo the most important one is the Entrepreneurship Incubator Program. This is what we serve the uh, entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs starting a new business with. We take them through the journey for 12 weeks from ideation to market launch ready um, in just 12 weeks. Um, the other one is actually we also uh, provided Entrepreneurship Mentors Accreditation Program. This is dedicated for all the uh, entrepreneurs who wants to then share their insights and experiences in a more and a more clear and structured, well structured way. So moving on. Ta -da -ta -da -da -da. Welcome to episode two. We're going over stage two and we are go going to kiss your market research. So um, these are the common problems. So after you uh, have your idea and then the next step that you need to do in our case, based on our e uh, which I will show a little bit later um, at the end of this um, episode is after you have an idea, you just don't go out there and just do it. Why? Because this is usually the risk that people take without thinking and taking it a little bit. Just take this little uh, step of doing a little bit of a market research um, to avoid, you know, um, uh, what we call an immature loss in building your business, especially at the very, very early stage. And especially if you don't have like a million dollar um, seed funding for your business. All right, so this is very very important to keep it lean So what are the common problems that people face usually at this stage two where they need it actually to do and that can be answered by doing market research so Either there's an issue around confidence one either you're in confident if you're a entrepreneur or you're overconfident and then there's also the element of fear here that is usually a problem. There's a fear of rejection because at this stage you would want to really connect with other people who potentially can be your ideal client in the future or just people around you and start asking questions around or try to, you know, also introduce this idea to these people and then you fear that they might judge you they might reject you so this is the most common problems that people are facing but there's also fear of success these are the people who usually um, feel that they can actually do it they actually know that they have what it takes but they feel that they don't deserve it so uh, check yourself which which part of uh, which are the problems that you probably resonate well with you um, at this current stage of your business and there's this perfectionism or overthinking this actually just stop you and this make you stuck in the same place without ever being able to do really anything on the execution part because you keep it all in your head and then nothing is going to ever going to be finished because there's always something wrong there's always something wrong and you need it perfect um, and it stalls you most of the time from moving forward with your project and then the other problem is that at this point we are just basically making assumption and most of the things that's very very interesting in our journey uh, within our incubator at this stage when they finish doing market research the comments from our students or our participants are like wow my assumption is totally wrong 
I thought they were going to reject my idea, but apparently a lot of people need that. I thought my idea was the best, and people would want it this way, the way I want it, but apparently people who really need this want it in a different way. So things like that is really, really good to know because then you increase your higher chance to create a prototype that uh, people are going to respond to in a better way. And then this one is like the mother of all problems in building a business where people just don't execute. So if you have watched the previous video, the first one ever, we introduced the term NATO there, the NATO, where we just talk about things, no action, talk only. So that's NATO, what's NATO stands for. So then um, by doing this um, uh, KISS series, especially for the Stage 2, Episode 2 market research, we are expecting that we can provide you with some support in a more simplistic way and even provide you with one tool that can keep it simple for you so that at the end of this presentation, at least, you will be able to not too many things, but at least just go out there and do your market research, All right? Baby step, one step at a time. But how are we going to do this? How are we going to support you? So here's how we're going to help you with that. We're going to introduce you the six action steps for market research. We shorted it out with ID3CE. So the first one is identify your assumptions. What are the main things that are regarding to um, regarding your business idea that basically you really not know for sure? You are just making assumption at this point, right? And then determine your research objectives based on trying to prove whether your assumptions are right or wrong. And then you only after that you need to decide your research methods, right? including what tools are you going to use, how are you going to use them best, right? And then you just design them. After you design your research, of course, you go out there and collect the data using the tools and the methods that you have decided upon, collect them, and then examine your research data. All right, so let me introduce you to the tool. We call this tool the Market Research Board. So as you can see there, we are trying to put all the six uh, approach for market research into one board. And I'm going to show you now how to use this with some of the prompts there. But uh, don't worry about it as well after, I mean, the, in the uh, uh, description of this particular video below, you will find a link so that you can download this particular tool, print it out for you, or fill it in digitally. It's up to you, but you can use them hopefully, and this will be very, very useful for you to help you in your journey. So let's get to it. Assume problems is where we start, okay? So here is where we identify the uh, uh, assumptions that we make around our idea. And then we just jot them down here so that it helps us to clear our head and really, really see, make them visible so that it's also clearer for us to process them. So this can be things, for, uh, for example, for me, it's very important to know, um, to assume I have in my head who is going to buy from me. And then I'm going to go into a little bit of a detail. I will assume that probably people at this gender group will buy from me, um, at this certain age group will buy from me. They probably will have at least a certain amount of money coming in regularly as their monthly income. And they're usually having these type of problems, right? Top three of them that I can help them solve through my business or my idea. And then I'm going to assume that this is how I can help them. And then I will assume as well that they should be paying this much for the solution I provided them, right? So just jot them down over there. And then we move on to the objectives. So you would want to connect the objective of your market research with proving your assumption, right? So for me, for example, I'm going to try to find out, I can make a question out of it, so it can be a research question or a research objective or both uh, to just help you make it clearer. 
I'm going to find out whether it is true or not that Indonesian female at the age of 30 to 45 years old actually wants to start career as a virtual assistant nowadays. And I want to find out whether they need training for the skills that they need to be a VA. And I also want to find whether they need to be connected with people who might want to hire them opportunities for job offer, right? And I also want to know whether they're willing to pay for the training or not, and whether they're also willing to pay for the opportunity of professional connection. And if they do, how much are they willing to pay? So those are the objective for my first level market research. So and then I move on to the design. Here I just put my design into including the methods and tools that I'm going to use as well as number of samples of respondents that I probably need, right? So for example, I'm going to choose using qualitative method so it's uh, there's no big numbers involved in there. So mostly I think the, bigger, the, the, the better tool for that would be surveys or interviews right so i think i'm gonna combine those two and then i'm going to ask at least 25 people i'm going to find at least 25 people for this so you just decide right and when you're doing the uh, questionnaire survey interviews anything with questions you might want to have at least five or 15 questions mass maximum so you don't want to have too small number of questions you want to get as many details as you can without overwhelming your respondents as well so 15 is a good number that's already actually quite a lot right um, um, something that you can finish with people if it's an interview it's within 15 minutes right not too much of their time and if it's a questionnaire or survey, people can finish it within, you know, less than 10 minutes, five minutes um, max. Um, a number of respondents, if you're just getting started and it's not a ma massive one, um, not to think too much of that, just pick a number between 10 and 100. So then, once you uh, designed it, then you just create the tool, right? Um, that is... Um, align with the method that you're going to um, qualify and then um, just list down the number of respondents right you can list down from the people that you know and if you can really have a 20 or 25 um, names in there then that's great but people tend to worry that I don't know that many people then ask for help all right out of those people you know who are 35 sorry, 30 to 45 uh, years of age, um, Indonesian female in this case of example that I'm giving you, um, they might most likely know another Indonesian female 30 to 45 years old. That's their community, right? So have no fear when you have less than the number that you expected in your own inner circle. Just reach out for help specifying what kind of responses, what type of responses, uh, respondents, sorry, that you need for this particular um, market research, all right? Just make that clear and ask for the people's help. So all that um, is being done and then all you create, uh, sorry, you collect your data and best is that to make it easier for you to evaluate, you collect them based on your categories of the research questions or objectives so that you can really see them in place. And if um, my best um, advice is that for people, especially who are using questionnaires or surveys and stuff like that, or interviews, just use the Google form. Uh, that's cheap, you know, you don't have to pay anything for that. And you have the Google form, once you created the response uh, sheet, it just creates everything based on the category. So you don't have to just, you know, do them manually. So that uh, is what I would um, recommend. Um, and then you can add secondary data to this primary one. So the primary one is the one that you yourself collecting uh, are collecting through your designs, um, your research designs. Um, but the secondary data is that you, uh, the data that you can collect 
not from your respondents only. This can be um, anything that you can, you can find from books, journals, or other research findings, or even information that probably you can get from other business owners, or if you have mentors, ask some questions to your mentors or coaches, right? So once you have all of this data collected, all you need to do is then conclude that based on the results, right? So then now you can see whether it is true, right, based on the data that you collected, uh, whether your assumptions are true or not. Is it totally wrong? Is it entirely right? Or is it partially wrong and right, right? And then all you need to do is make a decision. There's an option of, you know, if it's entirely right, then great, just continue with your idea as it is. If it's partially right, then you probably need to make changes, only make changes where necessary based on the findings. Or if it's totally wrong what you assume, but it's just like completely different uh, target market, completely different way of uh, how they want to be supported through your idea or business or by you, then um, you can just change the whole idea. Even probably if you had thought about a name before, then change it. And that's okay. There's no right or wrong here. Even if you find that wow this is just not for me after market research that's actually good before you spend too much on building a project that probably is not going to make it you can just drop the idea of being an entrepreneur but that's also okay right if you find that this is not for you but whatever your decision is it is very important as you can see that now you can make a conscious decision about your business idea after you do market research because now you're no longer assuming stuff but you're really really basing it on facts that you find during the research so i hope this is very very helpful just put in the comments if you have any questions you want to connect with us um just um, uh, follow our pages and especially i think uh, you can just contact us here this is how, how you can uh, be uh, in touch with us but as for this kiss series if you like it if you feel you find that this is useful and you also feel that this, this might be benefiting for other people as well who are in the same journey with you please hit subscribe like this video hit subscribe turn on that notification bell so that you can also be notified for all new videos that we are putting uh, up here on this channel and share this with your friends and just in, in case you're wondering what our basis uh, um, for our teachings, the roadmaps for our curriculums in the incubation program and basically in the KISS program that we are providing you here. We're actually taking it from our LOT eBoard. It's short for Entrepreneurship Board. So it's basically our roadmap to building a business that leads to extraordinary life. So meaning it's not just um, it's like building the entire business, right? From scratch to very successful, very profitable business and even expand and scale it up to that level. So as you can see, there's uh, there are three main um, colors there. The green is the incubation phase, we call it. The uh, blue is the acceleration phase, you call uh, we call it. And then the red, reddish ones are the attraction phase. So Star Results is helping and supporting people throughout the incubation phase. So just in case you want to know, here's a little gift for you. That's the summary of the uh, um, lot eboard and the phases and the stages for each of them. And if you want to just know where you are at, at this point of your business um, just take the assessment there's a link here that, that you can just uh, do it right now it won't take uh, five minutes of your time uh, but I will put this link as well in the description below so that you can always go there and take the assessment my team will get back to you with the results 48 hours after you submitted your assessment uh, results and hopefully that can help you 
to uh, really see where you are at and what you need to do in this particular stage. And hopefully you can loop it back to our episodes of KISS series and use the tools there to support your journey. So with that, I'm going to wrap it. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. We're going to move forward with stage three in the episode three, which is actually based on your market research. We are going to kiss your prototype. So I'm Primi Jails from Star Results. See you in the next episode.